Hallelujah. It's a privilege and honor to stand because it's a will of God. It's a will of God. The whole world is celebrating Christ and we are born again Christian. Born again Christian. In this season, we are going to meditate something a precious, a covenant. Because our God is a covenant God. He does everything based upon the covenant which he makes to the mankind. He has done a marvelous way. All these times, we were singing Silent Night. But now we are coming to the next level. Can we? Yes. <laughs> Ready for your trumpet night. Get ready for your trumpet night. No more silent night. It's going to be a trumpet night. Get ready. We have a, a calling. We have an action. Have to do it. When we do that, we will be ready. Get ready. Now we are going to see Abraham, in Genesis 12, 1 to 3, is asking, Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Why he is asking him to leave everything and come? A, I mean, a girl leaves and come to a home, the man has to provide everything. Make sure that she is settled. But a king of king and lord of lord is calling Abraham. He cannot do it in the place where you are and what you are. So he has to show a something a greater and a mightier things. And he's saying, I will show you a place. I will make you a big tribe. You will be blessing. Every time he starts a word and he says, I will. He didn't say that I may, but he said, I will. I will, I will bless those who bless you. What a beautiful thing is that. That means the heaven is walking along with you. That nobody can do anything because the heaven is backing you. I will curse him who will curse you. Brothers and sisters, today you rem think about you are called, you are chosen, you are his own special people, and he says, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who will curse you. To the entire nation, be blessed within you. Entire nation, be blessed within you. Now we are called what? Born again believer. We are in Christ. We are Christ. In Christ, we are blessed today. Genesis 15, 1, it says, Do not fear, Abraham. I will be your strength and shield. How many can say amen to that one? That we have seen his strength and we have seen the shield kept before you that to keep every bad things away and is leading in such a peaceful and a happy life. Never look at the circumstances and the situation and consider this is it. Wait upon the Lord. He has plenty to show. And his ways are awesome and wonderful. We have seen, we have tasted. Genesis 15, 5 says, Look now towards heaven and count the stars if you can able to do so. 
now you all call stars that Abraham saw one day. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are called to do His will in this. So shall be your descendants. We are so glad that one day Abraham had a conversation with him and shown those stars which I see today. The stars are here. Genesis 15, 6 says, And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted to him for righteousness. He believed, and it is counted to him for righteousness. In Romans 4, 19, 22 says, And being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already and the deadness of the Sarah's womb. In our lives also, there's so many times we face situation and circumstances. It looks completely dead. There is no way that we can get that back or reach there or achieve that one. There is no such thing. In your King of Kings and the Lord of Lord, no, there's no such thing. Every death situation will rise in Jesus' name. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. That's what we have to do. If we give glory to God and trust, unwavering, and stand strong, and we walk, He is there for an answer. And being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was ab also able to perform. That is the only goal we have to look for. He can perform. He will perform. Because he never started with, I may. He said, I will. That I will stands for us. That we will see the touch of him. In our situation and walk of life, many times we come to a place called stagnant area. And then we will say, is it going to be? It is going to be. Even for me today, I can say that I'm praying about it. It is going to be, but it has been. It has been. And I'm so glad that I have a great family of God. To be a, a part in the great family of God is a privilege. Genesis 15, 80 says, How shall I know that I will inherit it? How shall I know I will inherit it? In Genesis 15, 9 to 12 is saying, Prepare a sacrifice, he's saying. So he said to him, Bring me a three year old heifer, a three year old female goat, a three year old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And then he brought all this to him and cut them in two down to the middle. The whole thing cut and placed the pieces opposite of others. But he did not cut the birds in two. And the vultures came down on the, on the carcasses. Abraham drew them. Do we see something here? All the sacrifice has been cut in the middle, one on this side, one on that side. There's a blood in the middle. There's someone who is going to do a covenant has to walk in that blood. It's called blood covenant. It begins that time itself in their situation. The one who is going to make a covenant must stand in the blood and make the covenant. Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. Now what is he doing? Abraham is sleeping. He's in the deep sleep. Who walked in that place to make the covenant with the Father? Who walked? 
Jesus himself walked in the covenant. And he says, here I am. I will make the covenant with you, my father. John 8, 58 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. That I am has walked in that blood for you and me. Because Leviticus 17, 11 says, Life of the flesh is in the blood. It is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. It is the blood which makes the atonement for the soul. And knowing that he has done that atonement, he stood there. He stood there. Knowing that Abraham's generation was generation and generation will pass by and there will be a mistake will take place. Shortcoming will take place. Who is going to be the one who is going to hold the covenant is going to stand for it. God made a way for people who have made mistakes. They said, okay, bring an animal, do a blood sacrifice, your sin is covered. Your sin is covered. Your sin is covered. There is no word is saying, you are redeemed, you are cleansed, you are sanctified, you are justified. This kind of word they didn't hear. They said, your sins are covered. Your sins are covered. Then one day, there's a day dawn. The covenant son who made the covenant with the father walked inside the garden of Gethsemane. He walked inside the garden of Gethsemane. And he says, he brought the twelve, he made one set of group to stay, and he separated three people and he says, come with me. Peter, James, and John. He says, come with me. And then when they came here, he says, you wait here. And then he went further up. That's a priestly anointed. He goes to the altar, to the most holy place, to pray. Why he's asking those three people to come with him and wait? In Matthew 26, 38, it says, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. Stay here and watch with me. Why is asking that one? Brothers and sisters, I intercession, intercessory prayer is an important one. Jesus brought three people with him and says, Stay with me and pray. We are here, brothers and sisters. We have to pray for one another. Take care of one another. Our life intertwined with each other. We have to think about that. I know that I have to go somewhere else, but then it's an intercede. If your brother is in trouble, you intercede. Stand strong. That's what he's asking. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay and watch with me and watch with me. But what he saw? They were sleeping. What could you, could you not watch with me one hour? Just one hour. Cannot do it? He went to pray again, woke them up again, third time, he didn't wake them, he just went and prayed. We are called the family of God. We have a responsibility. We have known each other. If we go to a mall, a million may come. But your eyes, when you hit your family, it stays there. We have a responsibility on that one. Matthew 26, 45 says, Now the covenant son is ready to face the consequences of our sins. He is ready. When he stood up on that place, he says, I am ready. Let thy will be done. He stood the ground and accomplished perfect in all 
respect, perfect in all aspects. Today, we are called redeemed, cleansed, sanctified, justified. Today, we are called redeemed, cleansed, sanctified, justified, because the covenant son walked in that once again, shed the blood for you and me. Shed every drop of it. Every drop of it. When the punctured on the side, you remember the Eve was taken from the side. The church was born on the side. The water and the blood flushed out. You and me are in a greater, greater call. Greater call. Hebrew 8, 6 says, But now he has obtained more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant which was established in a better promise. You come to a better covenant and a better promise. We have a King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in heaven. John 10, 27 to 30 says, My sheep hear my voice. You come to the covenant with him. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Every one of you he knows. Every one of you. He can call you by name. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. What a wonderful promise is that. That he has given us eternal life, and we will not perish if we follow him properly. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Today I stand here and say these words because of this word. Otherwise, I would have been nobody. I would have been nobody. Because the devil cannot snatch me out of his hand. My father was given them to me. What a wonderful brother I have. What a wonderful brother I have. What a wonderful savior I have. What a wonderful Lord I have to say this one is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. One side my father is holding, one side the son of God is holding and the sweet Holy Spirit is dwelling within you. That means in such a beautiful trinity is held you and the day you accepted him as a Lord and Savior. We have a, the Father who made, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have such a beautiful promise and a covenant that he has made for us. Covenant binding agreement cannot be held by just one person. Before this one, I want to just say a word. When Jesus appeared, and before Jesus could appear, Thomas said, until otherwise I put my hand in the wounds, I will not believe. But the covenant son walked in and said, Thomas, put your hand. Put your hand. I am the covenant son standing. He has. We have to thank Thomas for that one. He reconfirmed it. My Lord, my God. God cannot fail, brothers and sisters. Who break the agreement? Many shortcomings in our life too creates a gap. Many shortcomings. You know God is right there where you left him. That's the reason he says, come back. Come back to me. Come back to your first love. Let's walk together. In this covenant relationship with God, if you do your part, he will do his part. 
There is a two part is there. We must do our part properly. The moment you enter into the covenant relationship with God, necessarily you must be in covenant relationship with God's people. When you make a covenant with God, you have to have a covenant with your people of God because he, he holds the covenant too. You cannot relate to God on the basis covenant and refuse to relate those who are related to God by the same covenant. Covenant relationships are always on two panels. You are vertical towards God and you are horizontal towards God's people. It should be balanced. If anyone is not balanced, it is not going to be the same. It has to be balanced. It has to be in a place. There are 19 specific obligations of the new covenant. 19 specific. And Jesus walked and shone in action. All the 19 of them. He never undone one thing. He has done everything. The first one he did was wash one another's feet. That means no one is greater than nobody. We are brothers in Christ. One day we are going to stand in front of him as the whole. The second, to love one another. To build one another. To accept one another. To admonish one another. That means caution your brothers if they are making any wrong move. To greet one another. To serve one another. To bear one another burdens. To show forbearance to one another. That means patience to them. To forgive one another. To be subject to one another. To teach one another. To comfort one another. To encourage one another. To stimulate one another to love and good deeds. To confess our sins to one another. To pray one another. To be hospitable to one another. And to be clothed with humility towards one another. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10 says, But you are chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You are not ordinary guys. A holy nation, his own special people. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. We are called out of darkness into a marvelous light. That when you stand, the marvelous light will reflect on those who is in need. You once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. God wants a people who will walk with Him, who will walk with Him in prayer, march with Him in praise, and be thankful and worship Him. That's what He is expecting us to do. Revelation 3, 18 and 19, I wanted to read, to re-emphasize that we are the covenant holder. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garment that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may is ready to do everything. He says, come to me, I will give you. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous. What is asking us? If he is going to rebuke you and chasten you, that means you are his very special children. Therefore, be zealous and repent. He who has an ear, let him hear 
what the Spirit says to the churches. Behold, I am coming quickly. Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. To give to everyone according to his work. So specific on that one. According to his work. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we humble before you. You are such a wonderful covenant God that you kept your word from beginning till this day. A and amen. You are the alpha and omega in our life. You are the strength and the hope in our life. You are the joy and the peace in our life. You are the shield. You are the shepherd. Here we are, your children. Mahanur tukro bahaya kaha bakata lurusum mahashi metihi ikhna to rahai leli karaba. Father, let your blessing be abound on this family. And we pray and ask, strengthen us so that we may run. Strengthen us that we may do your will. Let thy grace only has to lead. Let thy word be stronger in our hearts and to do the way that you want us to go. To do what you have destined us to do. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your safety. We thank you for your grace. Thank you for the wonderful word. You are redeemed. You are cleansed. You are sanctified. You are justified. Because you shed the blood for us. You stood our ground. You gave us the liberty and joy to remember you, to acknowledge. We acknowledge you, my Father. We acknowledge you, dear Lord Jesus. We acknowledge you, sweet Holy Spirit. Lead us in your way that this family grow and multiply. Let thy name be glorified and magnified. We thank you, Father, for this precious moment in our lives. 